Hey everybody, this is Al Spath. I'm at a single table tournament over at Full Flush Poker. This is me with the 8-7 on the first hand. Got 1,200 chips to start. Didn't hit a flop, but it was worth 10, 10 bucks on the small blind just to see. I don't think I know any of these people because I don't play a lot of tournaments. I thought I would record one here because uh, need to add to the library over at YouTube under Al Spath. I hope you'll get a YouTube account. It's free. And then subscribe to my account, Al Spath, A-L-S-P-A-T-H. And also follow me here on Twitch TV at Teach GPL. I'm Teach here at the at the game. Playing here on Full Flush Poker. If you want to get an account there, please use AHR10 and get a free $10 into your account. It's a limited offer, so take advantage of it as soon as you can. Follow uh, Ace High Radio on Twitch and myself, Teach GPL, and uh, be in touch with a lot of folks that will be broadcasting and a lot of presentations. Uh, the one that just goes to show you at these low buy-ins dollar, people play any two cards. But you do want to follow and win gold bars and all kind of other things that Ace High Radio gives away. Drush and Sammo have a, a good system there. I myself, I'm mostly broadcasting to build a library of training videos up at YouTube for you. They are absolutely free. I just ask you as a favor to me to, to comment and also to, and this is an easy fold, even though I've got, I've got pot odds here I, I, and, and the position, I could easily have justified it and hoped for a 10-4 to flop or two fours. Uh, earlier this morning, I had a 6-4 and raised or uh, suited in, in early, and somebody re-raised me, and it turned out 6-6-4 flop. So I was, I could have got one of those miracle flops, but we don't get results oriented. We know what we have to throw away, and 10 is a throwaway hand. In this particular case, one of these people is either has a flush drawer, has a better 10, in other words, a better kicker than me, or a straight drawer, um, maybe even two pair, because a lot of people play 9-10, so... It's not a hand you want to be in there with 10-4. Bad kicker, uh, really bad hand. Later uh, this month and next month, I'll be broadcasting on Ace High Radio. I'll be interviewing and discussing things with Ed Miller, Cowboy Kenneth James, Steve Denman, finished second at the World Series a couple of years back, Donna Blevins, uh, resident pro from down in Florida, was our mind shift and mindset uh, interviews and uh, group sessions that she has online. It's really fascinating to hear what the dynamics of that is. And then Matt Savage, a tournament director, and a number of other friends of mine in the industry are going to stop by and have a chat. And maybe I can talk them into even sitting down and playing a couple of hands against us at a private table. We do have some Heartbeat Poker private tables set up at uh, Full Flesh. I'm waiting for a private uh, tournament table. I haven't heard back yet from Drush, but he put the request into Full Flesh. So these are kind of slow. These are kind of tedious. Uh, but the biggest thing to remember about a tournament is just stay quiet. Stay quiet. Don't worry about what's going on, or anything like that. Just just let it happen naturally, okay? Just organically, if you want. Look at that. The 10 would have held up. <laughs> That's two hands in a row, mate. Nothings would have held up. you got to let people knock each other out. At 10, 20, everybody's splashing in the pot. Anything can happen. I guess I could be, I could be one of those two and be up some chips right now. Um, that's up to you if you want to do that. You know, you can also be down 100 chips real early. And 100 chips in this kind of table is a lot. It's almost 10% of your stack because you're starting with 1,200. And then when the lines go up, all of a sudden you find yourself in a bad situation. You're, you're going to get short really quick.
Well, let's just see what's going to happen here in this hand. I have taken a challenge before over at Bugsy's Club, if you all remember that part of uh, Poker Pages. I sat on a Sunday afternoon and give you 10,000 chips in a tournament, and I posted and folded, and I made it to 11th place. I never played one hand the entire tournament. In fact, I wasn't even there. I just posted and folded and let everybody else bust each other out. Now, can you imagine in that tournament if I, all the good hands I had, if I could have just played a few hands and won a few chips, how I would have money. And I think the bubble in those things was like 20th place because they had so many hundreds of people that, and thousands of people that entered those events. So now we've gone up to 1530 and now you see the aggression level is going to step up a little bit. And people are going to have to make note of 75 is a significant part of a person's chip stack. So they have to worry. I'm going to let it time me out here. I got to take a break and I'll be right back. There'll be a void in the speaking. I know TM, TMI, but I'll tell you this. Oh, look at that. I would have flopped an open ender. There's the big one right there. I would have got there. Cracked him again. Man, what's wrong with me? I guess two out and I haven't done a thing. I would have won that one. Knocked out this guy too. Probably. Another fold here for me. Just because they're happening doesn't mean I'm going to start playing them or anything like that. That's just not my style to play like that. I needed to take that break. While I was away, I got a straight here on the board and I got a flush in the other room. Quick check, this person should bet. That's right, doesn't matter if you hit. Quick check usually means I, uh, I give up. Okay, we're going to check this one out, roll it down, limping, limping, limping. This bet here should be around 120 if they wanted to raise. That would be three times the big blind plus the one person that limped, so that would be 4x. The challenge that I was given was to play like a knit, and I'm going to try that the best I can. You've heard it before, people say, boy, he's playing kind of nitty. It's really tight, really tight, tighter than a bullfrog's butt in an inch of water. Can't play it, folks. Unplayable. I don't know why this guy takes so long to act. I think dial-ups are a thing of the past. Must be 
playing cash or some other kind of game. First one in now should be up around the $90 mark. He went a little bit further. Usually if you're on the button and you do that, it's a signal your hand is a little weaker. You know, why would you worry about the two blinds and, and bet that much? You want to bring them in if you have a good hand. So I would think that he might have a lone ace, like an ace rag, or he might have just something like, you know, king nine. So unfortunately, we don't get to see cards like that. But I want you to think in those terms when, when you're playing and somebody does that, why did they make it that amount? That's four times the big blind. Now look how much money he's got behind. He's got, always check what they have behind the chip. Look, he's still got eight. He's from Russia. He's very aggressive. Usually people are from, from that part of Asia. Um, but he's only at 890 behind. What happens if this person or this person re raises What is he more likely to do? He raises an early position. He's more likely to push it all in. Especially it being a dollar tournament, they have nothing to lose. They can jump into another tournament, although at full flush, the sit and goes don't fill up that fast. We're up another level to 2040 now. So it's gone up two levels. I started in a small blind, so it's gone up two levels since it went once around the table. And that's with two seats missing now. So it's pretty, pretty fast. And normally this guy would raise here to uh, take take this away from me. I don't think he's got shit. I really don't think he's got shit. And uh, I'm gonna fold. I could, if I was gonna play back at this person, I'd probably make about 340. And I think he'd go away. The only problem I have is he's got that extra money here. And he may just, if he had a little something, might give me a, a call back. Well, I let some time run off. I let him think for a while that I was going to do it. So maybe the next time he does it, he, he's a little bit uh, edgy about doing it. That's a fold. I definitely call for 20. I don't want one of these two guys raising. I don't want him to raise, of course. So we don't have anything again. Down $100 from the start. Got an easy fold here. So the, the big blind's 40. 40 into 1,000, you know, is, is it's like 30. So I got about 32 big blinds here, um, which is plenty. But remember, when the blinds go up, your amount of big money that you have can change. So I got a good hand. I got to take I got to take uh, these people to task here with a nice big bet. I got to collect some extra money here. I can't let them get it cheap. If he raises, I'll, I'll just come over the top and and go on. So a pot size bet is 140, and I I want them to pay a little bit more since it's, they're so loose. That's a significant part of their stack. Now they have to have. To, it helps me define my hand and their hand. Their hand, if they come in for 200, then I know they might have an ace king or an ace queen or something like that. And so if it flops, I might be able to get away from the hand. Or if I take the 100 that's out there, that's fine too. Now you got a caller, and I got the queen king, which is never a good sign when, when you get something like that. So I'm going to bet 230 here. Comes over the top, and that's another thing, but didn't. So I think that that person probably had a medium pair or something like that and then was scared off. I, I, I can't be scared of what the overcards come on heads up. I've got to take a shot at winning it at that point. Usually I go more than half on that, but I wanted to keep enough that I still had money to have some kind of substantial influence on somebody else in another hand up coming if I bet five or six hundred rather than three or four hundred because I might get calls from people that I don't want and with the three or four hundred I want to have enough money that I could still get a little fold equity meaning that I, I could bet something where I even missed and get them to fold 
because it was enough that they didn't want to challenge me. They had middle pair, bottom pair, and they didn't feel like where they felt like they were behind. So I win pots that normally I wouldn't win I, by betting first. I have equity. Now this guy should bet. They all checked it around to him. He should bet the pot. He doesn't. Now that 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 lets a nine ten have free reign. Let's a five four hit a gut shot right there. Look at the texture of the flop. How could that help somebody? Just think about what cards they may have had. Maybe they had a six seven, and now all of a sudden now they have six and seven sevens. That doesn't change thing. Nine ten was a straight before. Jack just makes it higher. Easy to fold and stay out of the way. Let other people do the work for you. If you don't have anything, don't do it. Just making sure I'm streaming. Lost the sound there for a second. Now, this guy should call no matter what. Look, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40. It's costing him 20 for 220. He's getting, uh, what, uh, 5, 10, 11 to 1 on his odds. He can have anything. I mean, please. That's a dumb, that, that's a good name, dumbass, because that's a dumbass move there. Think about it. When you close the betting, especially when you close the betting, meaning you're the last to act, nobody can raise you, you look at the pot, you look at how much it costs, and if it if you're getting 5, 6, 7, and 1, that's great. If you're getting 10, 9, 10, 9, 10 11, and 1, you're, that's fantastic. It doesn't matter what you have. He may have folded 3, 6 here. Who knows? He bet the whole pot here. I got a feeling that he's just got like King Jack and got the one pair. This guy might have the clubs. Let's see. Maybe I got it backwards. Let's see. Let's see. He had the Jack three and he only had the Jack. So I imagine he had Ace Jack there. He gave this guy, I believe who I have a note on. Well, let's see. Back on the 5th of September, he draws a lot. Well, he hit with a jack three there, folks. That was jack three of spades, I do believe. It was clubs on the board, but jack three of spades, so any two suited cards. That note is accurate. Big bet here. The rest is going in if somebody does something here, because I'm not going to fold Put 360 of his 900 in there. They got a caller. With I don't care who wins. I just want one of them to go out. Makes the game easier for me. Just didn't want him to fold. Now he's a short stack. I gotta watch the short stack because their play is usually an all in. Look, 60 into 6.9, he's got just 11 big blinds. When you get to be 10 big blinds or around that area and under, you really only have a play that's all in. When you go all in, somebody doesn't know if you're making a stand with pocket threes, you got ace king, or if you got a big pair. So a lot of times you get somebody to to hook you up or, or call you when you have a hand, uh, a good hand, because they think that you're trying to just steal some money. Like right now, if he went all in, <laughs> honestly, I don't have a phone to Bulgaria or wherever he is. He didn't hear me. Oh, this is great. Who cares? Who cares who wins? Diamonds up here, straight draw up here. Queens down here, but the ace over here made a full house all in. And look at that. He went from 621. He got his first ace, and he did what he's supposed to do. He went all in. And now we have three gone.
temper, limper, razor, not enough. He will call, he will call. There's no doubt in my mind. He's a small body. He could fold it. He should call. He's closing the betting. You can see what the odds are. 60 for 300. He's getting 5 to 1. He does fold, which is, is wrong. You don't limp and then fold to a min raise. If this guy would have made it a little bit more, I can understand it. He'd limp with a couple of cards, like 6-4 or something like that, and want to see a flop. Um, but then he didn't want to pay a lot. But for, for the extra money, he should have definitely called there, I think. Or never got in the hand to begin with. These take usually around 45 minutes, 50 minutes, depending on how play goes. Bunch of people limping in again. They don't want to limp here and let me see a flop with 7-4 and get connected. He wants to raise, get me out, get a couple of these people out, especially since he's out of position. Oh, we get to see it. Three. Not so good. It could have been two sevens. That's all I was hoping for is flop into magic. That doesn't take long for me to get out of the way of that kind of hand. Here's an experiment for you, is just close your eyes for a second, don't look at the board. How many people have less chips than me that are remaining in the tournament? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, you can open your eyes, see if you got the answer right. Should have been three. Okay, so he don't, if you don't bet more than 60, I'll call the 30, even with a 5.8, because look, it's 30 for 270. I'm trying to show you what the odds are there. He may raise, but then I'll fold, but I'll, uh, unless it was a min raise. Now I hit nothing, but this could easily could have been two fives or an eight five or seven six or something like that. For 30 bucks, 30 is not that much significant of 1240. So I would do that just about every single time. That's a good one. We want somebody to call here now. We want somebody else with the flush to call this guy here, and somebody might go out. Nope. We always like it when somebody goes all in and somebody else calls. Now we're at 80. All right, that's almost going to be getting us down near the 15 big blind mark, and we soon we have to shove, but not yet. I could have shoved, sure. I got 3-8. Maybe these guys have no hands at all and they, they fold and I pick up 120, but it isn't worth it to risk my life for 120. Now, if this was a pair of ace, absolutely. Or if it was a decent hand, ace 10 or above, yeah, sure, I would be definitely in that pot. Just. Wait and wait in Washington. I think that's BG is Bulgaria, but I'm not sure. So I said Ace 10, I would have shoved, and look at that. That would have been pretty nice. I wouldn't have got a call. I would have never seen the flop anyhow. But now I got a better hand than Ace 10. Want limpers in front of me. Okay. I can figure that this is 160, 200. That's a good enough pot for me. If I get a call, that's fun. Thank you. 280. Remember, Ace King is just. And suited, it's pretty. It's a group one hand, but it still needs to improve usually to win unless you have an ace high and the, and the ace plays. And that's that's going to be rare. So if you're up against a pair of sixes or deuces, you're an underdog. So if you can take 200 with it, just take it. Look at that flop in my cards. 
I've been throwing away money all day long. Look at that. <laughs> no, I can't get upset. That's Brazil. So I'm gonna, I can't imagine that I would get a flop like five, seven, eight, or even seven, eight, ten. Uh, and you don't want seven, eight, ten. I'll tell you why. Because people play jack nine. You may think you're in great shape with six, nine. But always think of what the other person might have. It makes a bigger straight. So don't go down that path. Easy fold. We'd have middle pair, draw, open-ended. They both check, so they don't appear to have too much here. Very easy fold. I think the next increase, you're going to see it go 50, 100. I think all of a sudden you're going to see a different tactic used at the table. Remember, when it gets to 100, anybody that has less than 1,000 or 1,000 is, is less than 10 big blinds. So you're going to see a lot more pushing and quick folding. It's going to go around the table a lot faster. But the game's going to accelerate. But the game really doesn't start till we get up at another level. A lot of times when they give you a decent amount, like 2,000 chips to start, I always tell people that the game starts at 100, 200, because that's when people get forced into taking actions. And for those of you that are not familiar with tournaments, the reason that the blinds rise every so often is to end the game. It's the only reason they rise. Otherwise, the game will go on who knows how long. They force play. That's why when you play in a tournament live or you play it online, and the blinds go up, that's to get it over in a certain amount of time. Usually, tournaments uh, are determined by how many chips you get and the levels, how many minutes between the levels. He checked, and if he was going to bet, he should have went in first for 720 because he would have fold equity. He could get this guy maybe to fold a hand, but see, he didn't, and he's going to get it all in there. He's got a draw. He's going to wind up winning with a better hand. Just a kicker. Wow. If you're going to check call, you're going to get yourself into trouble a lot of times. He's got this one. I'm not, I'm not contesting that. The only way he could have missed this one is if he had some really low cards. It's not likely. He's got a short stack. With that ace, he should have he should have went in. He might have been looking to see if myself or somebody would attack him with the ace, and maybe he would get a double up. But there was no way I was entering that pot. Now, same thing here for forty dollars. Forty doesn't kill me. If these guys are two or three of them limp, I'll put the forty in. See if I can spike. A jack two or two twos. If they both fold. I probably fold. It's a good chance he might re-raise. I'm gonna fold it. I needed somebody else down here to come in. It's 200 a pot. It would have cost me $40. I didn't get five to one, but I was out of position. Bad cards. I need a little bit more than five to one in that situation. If somebody else would have came in here, that would have given me a little bit better pot. Hey, Dixie. Uh, thanks for coming in and viewing. Um, don't know how you've stumbled on my Twitch page, but thank you. I hope you follow me here at Teach GPL. And if you go up to my YouTube page, Al Spath, a-L-S-P-A-T-H. You can find my playlist. Just If you don't have an account, just make one there. It's free. And then subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's free. And I've got tournaments and cash tables starting at nickel dime all the way up. So you can follow and get a lot of instruction free. I'm the former dean over at Poker School Online. been teaching for 25 years. So I hope you join us. I hope you tell me right here in chat where you how you found stumbled on us and, and also... Uh, where are you from? First name's good too. All right, we're at 51, 100 here.
Game's really going to start right now. This guy should raise, and he's going to got 250. Now, he raised 250. He's not going to fold the 520. He's probably got a big hand here. So if any of these people come in, they better have a good hand. I don't think he's really stealing from back here. Ten four is absolutely trash. Got Dixie eleven thirty in the house. Nice to have you in. This guy should bet the seven eighty if he said anything here. Don't give this person. Oh, see how fast that person checked? But you get any checks. Giving this person a chance to take that entire pot. Once again, a three, a two, and a winner. It's crazy. Easy fold. Again, we're playing at only a dollar sit and go. You have to think about what you enter and how much money people play and how, what kind of skills they have. I would have had an open ender here. I would not really want the 10 because somebody could be, you know, playing a higher hand and get, go to the queen, get a straight. Why would he bet 650 the pot? That's an easy button. He's got 90 behind. It's going in. We want this guy up here to win. He flopped a straight. One pair is not going to do it. Goodbye. Remember, early leader, he won that hand that I wasn't in. He got up to 3,500 chips. Now where is he? On the rail. You don't want to be on the rail. You want to get into the money. Anytime you play poker, you have to set a goal to get into the money. The first priority is to play your best poker and play smart. Be patient, be disciplined, save chips when you can, make chips when you can. The second goal is to get into the money. You got to get paid for your time. All right. The third goal is to move up and get into the real money. The real money is first and second place in the sit and go. It's 50 and 30%. The 20% you get for third is not enough. It's just enough to pay your buy-in and a little bit more after the uh, little bit of a rate that they take. So this person, dumbass, lost his money back to this person. Good raise, easy fold. Hey, Nigel's in the house. How are you, Nigel? All right, you know I'm going to go all in. Whatever the results are. Now, this guy, I'm going to put him on a small pair, but maybe an ace eight or ace nine, which I, is what I hope he has here. I don't want this person in. So I'm going to go all the way up and re-raise. If they come in, I want them to really triple me up. Ace eight. Oh, bad cards for me. That's a big pair. That's going to felt me unless I get the king and he doesn't get the queen. So I got lucky, but I got to take that race. I can't sit there. And he lost all his chips now. Seven eight, you'll see me playing the cash game really hard. In the tournament game, I don't value them. As, as much I'm on the button here if I was gonna play the sand since I got chips I would play it for 250 I probably will get this person to call me here I don't want them to go all in but I know oh and I got two callers and I got four hearts I may just take the free card here because if I bet and they come over the top of me I don't want to be forced on the flush I'm gonna just do it this way I think that they're gonna fire I can't do it. I can't do 400 there. I only got, uh, oh, what I would have hit. I've only got 18% uh, chance of getting a heart. Nine times two, rule of four or two. So I could have pushed and got him out maybe or got all my money in and then I would have wound up getting the flush and winning. So maybe I made the mistake of checking to take the free card. Back with my ace king. See if it holds up again. Grouper's thinking. Nope. The pot is 375. 
I don't want to go 375. Let's see. I'm going to go 675. They knew that I put that much money and I was going the rest of the way. I was hoping I could get somebody that wanted like an East 10 and wanted to see a flop or something like that and take my chances there. That's an easy fold for me. This is an easy push for me. Unless this guy pushed. Well, I got my small blind back, but I got his big blind at the time, so that's okay. That'll help. The way that these blinds are whipping around the table five-handed, it's going to drain everybody, and that's we're going to go up to 100, 200 in a second or two, and that's going to really change the dynamics at the table. Because if you think 200, 10 times 200 is 2,000, that's 10 big blinds. Look around the table, how many people have just three of us are going to be pushing... Thinking about it, folks. May have a draw here. May have an eight. Nope. This guy got something because he put 300 down first. He's got a lot of money. He knows he's going to have 1,500 left. He's got the top pair. Not the right kicker. Not that eight jack's great, but it's going to beat eight nine. That's for sure. Got to play better cards than that late in the game. This is a troubled hand for me. I don't even want any part of it. I just, any ace three or any ace reg that defends against me has is, is got me 58-42. So I, I'm going to throw it away. It could be a big mistake. There's a jack. If I was going to play it, though, there's a queen. I would have raised with it. They would have both folded. So I would have never seen the flop. So I got queens. And I kind of want a, a call here. So I'm going to make it 475. It could be the wrong thing for me. Um, somebody could have ace-king and beat me. But I'll take that race against ace-king. I want somebody to come over the top now. All in. Whether it beat me or not, I want them to come over the top and get all their money in. Don't want a king to hit the flop. That's a terrible card for me. I got a bet. I got. I'm going to bet 600 here. I figured if 600, if a king comes over the top, and I got to decide then whether I believe him or not. Didn't want to commit myself with the 900 right there. I'm calling that with my fives. Not calling all in though. Five hearts. Nope. And that's a very bad flop for me. So that's checking out time. Worth 75 here. This guy's a calling station, so I'm, I'm, I'm not inclined to raise him if I'm first in here against him. He's allowing me to see flops cheaply, which is good. Now, I think he'll bet anything there. I'm going to take a couple seconds to make him think that I'm thinking about doing something there, even though I'm not. If he's got something, he's going to fire right now. And I don't think he does. So I'm going to bet now uh, 200. I don't have a damn thing, but the only way I can win is I bet the 200. He folds thinking I hit the flush. 
Use the board to your advantage, especially when you're out of position. That's a fold. Hey, Nigel, could you tell me if you just stopped by or if you got an email saying that I was broadcasting? Thank you. Just write it in chat. Again, I'm just, the blinds are going up, and the, the people that have the $1,200 and the, uh, well, some of them got back up to $2,000, they are going to have to make the plays. This guy might go all in right here. He doesn't want to post another big blind. He, he might put a, a wider range of hands and put all his money in. He doesn't. So um, that's worth a, a, just a little min raise for me just to see where I'm at. I would prefer he fold and these folks called so they'd be out of position. So I picked up uh, the threes. I got a straight draw. He could have an eight, but I don't know that. Uh, I'm going to go 225 and see what he wants to do. That's a guy that might have had 10 jack and hit absolutely nothing, so kind of wasted money. I got kings here, and I'm going to... Just uh, raise it to $500 and see what I can get. I sure don't want to call her and then to see a, an ace flop. Him, I want all in. He can't kill me. There you go. That's kings, queens. Run them out. Run them out. There you go. Goodbye. Take a seat. Hit the rail. Sayonara. Ciao. Bon voyage. Get the hell off the table. Now, see, somebody went all in here. I might not even take this race. I'm in a good position now to get myself into money. And why would I want to spend a lot of money here? See, there's a good example. If he's got a pair of fours or a pair of fives, it's a flip. Why do I want to flip at this point? I don't want to flip. If he's got ace jack, I'm, oh, he's got ace queen. He showed it. I've got him smothered, okay? I got her smothered. But why do I want to do that? My goal is to get into the money. All right? I hope you guys can, can realize that. Any other bet that that person makes, I'm in there. But they go all in. I'm folding that 99% of the time because of their stack size. Remember, the stack size was up in the 3,400. It would cr cripple me. I don't know I'm going to win with ace-king. Ace-king's nothing. If I had pocket pair there, you know, big pocket pair, absolutely I'm going to challenge him. So here I'm gonna I'm gonna raise it 400, which is the min raise towards the end when it gets this high. 400 is enough to influence people. I could have went 500, two and a half. Now he re-raised. He's got a good hand. He went all in here. I'm gonna let him have it. I'm not gonna give him any more money here. Again, I'm not gonna jeopardize my position until after one of these two goes out, unless I have a really good strong hand. I guess Nigel can't hear me uh, because I asked him to post something in chat. So seven eight's not a great hand. Certainly can check it and see if I can flop something here. I don't. Ten's not a bad card to come off, but I don't think I'll get to see it because I'm not paying two fifty. Oh, same hand again, eight seven. This guy should erase Sarah. Nope, I'm just going to limp in, see if he lets me limp. If he pushes, then I know better. Does he have Queen King? I don't know. Nope. Easy fold coming up for me. I want one of these two to raise. I want these two guys in the 2000 to mix it up. I'm going to buy a little time. Now, this is another little secret when you're playing these games. When it's your turn and you have time, give your opponent time to think about what he wants to do. Don't, don't, he may be already has the fold button on, but then again, you may just give enough time where he thinks, maybe I can limp or I can raise. 
Let them battle. Don't make it easy for them. Make it hard for them. Bet 400. Nope, two. Two lousy hands. If he raised pre flop, he might have won that. A lot of you would raise here with this ace, any race, but the people that are defending here, and I'm not going to do it right now. I don't have to, I'm not in that position to, to play an ace rag and get second place in the race and fourth place in the tournament. That's not my goal. My goal is to play my best. You know, some hands I've played, man, I could have played better, sure. Maybe made more, but I got to get myself in the position to win. First, get paid though. You got to get paid. I'm going to hammer that home. You got to get paid. You can't just play for fun. There's a guy on here. Uh, I won't mention any names, but I'm hoping that he changes his Skype name. That he it says something about he's playing and he's having fun. Uh, don't play for fun. Play for earnings. I might call one hit one card here. I'm going to take my time. I uh, picked up two pair here. Let's see what he wants to do. She wants to do. She may have something like Jack Nine, Queen Nine. She believed I had a king there. I had no clue what I really had. Three hundred now. Look at how three hundred severely. Goes into the stack. Come on, raise here, sir. You've got to do it now. This is the time. Come on, Sarah. Put it in there. Nope, she's buying me time to make a mistake, but I'm not making a mistake with this hand. I know what I'm going to do before it comes around to me. I know what I'm going to do with this one, too. The pot is 750. Come on, somebody just jump right in there with all your chips. And I got the redraw here. Am I afraid that he might get something else? I don't know. That's going to make him go all in. Nope. Easy fold. Though I like playing those cards. I gotta have my discipline now. The blinds are gonna affect the play of these other opponents more than it's gonna affect my play for the next four rounds. I have to expect somebody's gonna mix it up and go out. Don't care how many chips they get. I want somebody like this 1295 making a stand and somebody calling like this, but they didn't do it. I'm not gonna call and give them. 900 chips with king nine. If I had something good, sure I'd call. But I'm not going to do it when I have nothing. This is a tough one for me if she doesn't bet. I'm going to put 150 in. He's, he's liable to, to jam again. And I don't want to jam, but I'm going to do the 150 and see if he'll see a flop. If he jams, I give it to him. So I mean, you're inside my head there. That's going to be an easy fold. I don't think he's got a jack or a queen he would have jammed. So I'm going to bet here and up. Oh, I'm beat. I'm beat. I wasn't beat. He had an open ended draw and he stayed. Wow. So I gave him a lot of ammunition there. He would have probably went all in with that 10 jack too. So I might have saved money by not, you know, trying to steal it or anything like that. But. Sometimes it's tough. Here we go. Here we go. We don't care who wins. 5-3 against the open ender. There's the open ender. Zippo. Auto. Money. Now we can play a little different. We're in the money. That was the first, second goal. First goal was play our best to get ourselves in position to get into the money. That was the key. And we're in the money. Now we get paid. Now we want to move up the chain. 
But I want you to realize that what happens when people get into money, a euphoria takes place and they feel like, oh, I'm in the money. I can just splash around now and they go out. So this guy raised it up. I don't have much. $300 here. I'm going to call and see if I can catch something since I'm closing the bed. I didn't get anything so I can just fold it up the tent. Then he can hear me live. And did He got an email too, right, Nigel? Thank you. This is an easy fold for me. I want Sarah in the pot. She's sitting back. There you go. I'm going to buy this guy some time. She's all in. I'm buying him time. Yeah, no intention of me playing. I'm buying this guy time to look it over to see, check his stack, what he'll have left. He may not do it anyhow, but I'm trying to buy him time. I don't want the pressure on him. Doesn't bother me if she gets his chips or he gets her out. I don't like the 910. It's not bad. If I was lower chip stack, I pushed all in. But I got I got the time to wait a hand or two. Look at these two. Maybe they'll just go. She's she's on a she's uh, got that euphoria going. She's in the money. She's she didn't play like that before. See a push now. Maybe I go out. Maybe I don't. But I defend for sure. So she needs to get an eight to beat me. Now she's up a creek. This guy's very happy, and I got the diamond redraw. So she got she got a little bit of euphoria. Any ace syndrome and she started pushing it so now i'm at 30 percent. now i gotta go for first place so i'm gonna put just a little pressure on this guy i'm giving him a min raise each time okay so that's money i won with nothing i'll defend when i say defend i don't mean I'll go all in with it or anything like that. I'm going to nudge him each and every time. I'm going to blind him down if he doesn't want to defend. If he's going to wait for a good hand, he's, then I'm going to know when he has a good hand. Now, if he raises, I'll fold this. I won't defend with this. But I'll see a flop with it. I'm going to act like I have maybe a spade or two, but not a good one. Not worth it. Maybe I'm worth it. Each and every time. It's going in here. I want him to think I'm on a draw. If he's on a draw, that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. Game, set, match. All four goals accomplished. When you watch my videos, you see them live. You hear the thinking that I have. You understand that I could get knocked out at any time. I do not edit. I do not edit. I want you to remember that. When you're watching other people do it, they do it a little different. They have their own way. I could have played some other hands earlier. Maybe I don't end up in this position. This is the way I get to this position, and this is the way I take it down. Hey, this has been Al Spath. It's the 12th of September. I'm glad you're listening in. Have a great day. And tell some friends to subscribe at YouTube to Al Spath and to follow me on Twitch at TeachGPL. Thank you now.